Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And today is the 1st of March, and that means it has been today that we have released our new Patreon reward on Patreon, obviously. Um, it is Evening Attractions, a series of seven puzzles um, which feature negative constraints. You will need to solve the first six to be able to solve the seventh, I am delighted to say. Give it a try. Um, it is an intriguing collection of puzzles. And delightfully, Philip Bloomer, friend of the channel for a long time and also known as Glum Hippo, um, has sent us a puzzle to, to trail it with, a Battenberg negative constraint Sudoku. And there is one of those in the pack, so this will be useful practice for a puzzle called Curtain Razor that begins the pack on Patreon. Um, so we earnestly advise you to have a go at that. Um, and of course, there are also many other things you can engage with the channel with. In the links under the video, you will find uh, links to Sven's Sudoku Pad, which you can download, to our merchandise, which you can buy, and to all of our apps, which include Line Sudoku, um, the latest one, and which is great fun. That's certainly the, the uh, feedback. Now, there are a few things that might well go wrong and probably will go wrong a bit during today's video, and that's even apart from the solving. So, first of all, the drama. Overnight, there was a huge house fire very near me, and there are still fire engines outside. There may be beeping. There is quite a lot of smoke that has even got into my flat, so there may be coughing. Um, and it's not impossible that we'll be asked to do something at some point. It was, it was really quite shocking. Nobody died, I'm delighted to say. And given what I saw at 2.30 in the morning, that's a big relief. So that's the drama. Um, the tedium is that my phone will go off at some point and I will just have to press a button or two to deal with it. I know that's going to happen. I apologise to you in advance, but I kind of have to record this video now. So... Let's hope nothing else goes wrong with the solve. I mean, in addition to those things, there are also obviously going to be um, problems in solving the puzzle, because there always are. But having said all the caveats, I am now going to... What did my wife describe me as recently? Somebody who, uh, for whom every silver lining has a cloud. The joy is that we will be track tackling world tuning for... Now, the title... Um, I have now forgotten what that was in the original German. Welt einer Stimmgabel. Something like that. And I don't know what on earth that means. World of tuning fork. I do know that if you... In some places, if you hold a tuning fork to the earth, you get some base level oscillation, don't you? That the, the earth is always humming at. Maybe that's what it's about. I don't know. I mean, obviously, there are three shapes in the grid which look a bit like tuning forks. I think that's what, what's in Philip's mind. But I don't quite know if this title is a, a quote from German literature about which I know nothing more than that the character Fistemafell appears somewhere in it. Um, I don't know. Anyway, let's do the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So one to nine will go in every row, every column, and every three by three box. Um, now, there is a Battenberg rule. So, whenever a two by two area consists of two odd and two even digits in a checkerboard pattern, a little checkerboard symbol is marked in the center. So, this one might be two odds in those positions and two evens in those positions, or it might be the other way around, but it must be one or the other. Now, notice that word wherever. Um, because that means that when, for instance, in this area, there is no 2x2 two two symbol, then that checkerboard pattern of odds and evens does not apply there. So that is the negative constraint we're dealing with. Now, we also have zipper lines. There's no negative constraints surrounding them. But digits in cells an equal number of steps from the midpoint of a lavender line must sum to the digit on the midpoint marked by a dot. So those two cells, which are each one away from this cell, add up to the number in this cell. And those two, oops, though, no, those two add up to the same number and those two, etc. Um, yeah, we've dealt with zipper lines before, but only in the last few months because they're quite new. And this is Philip's 
take on a negative constraint puzzle. Give it a try on the first link on the video. I've no idea how difficult it's going to be. You can maybe judge from the video length, although it's not always a guide. I am going to start now. Let's get cracking. So, so let's start in the cluster. No, I mean, actually, I'm, I, I was going to start over here, and I probably will. I'm just going to have a quick look at the zippers first. I mean, I reckon that's a nine because there's so many digits on its line. But actually, having said that, and having thought about it for a second or two more, that could be as little as a five. Because in every box this line passes through, there's a maximum of four cells um, on the tuning fork, which could be a one, four, and a two, three pair each time. Yeah, okay, that might be nice. <laughs> But it might well not be nine. I don't know what we can learn about the tuning forks. Okay, I'm going back to the to the uh, the Battenbergs. I do like a bit of cake in the morning. So let's colour these. Um, we shouldn't use purple because of the lavender lines. Let's make them orange and green. I shouldn't use orange because I will hope to colour one set of them orange for odd in the end. Let's use blue and green. No, grey and green. Now, there we go. Finally made a choice. Grey and green. So, ah yes, there's a very nice point straight away on the negative constraint. And that requires me to consider this 2x2 two two box, which has no Battenberg symbol in the middle. And therefore, we don't have a checkerboard pattern here, despite the fact that we know that these two are what I might call a domino, one of each colour. There's, there's a green cell and a grey cell, and I know that because of this Battenberg. However, it can't be green there and grey there, or we would have a Battenberg symbol here. So that's grey, that's green. Now we know how this one's working. And we've extended our coloured area to a 2 by 5 zone. And there, my lord, I leave you. No, look at this. This is very interesting. Right, those two are the same parity. Now, what do you know about adding two numbers of the same parity? You may say nothing, but you do know something. If you add two odds or two evens, what do you get? You always get an even number. So that cell is even. So if we can find the same relation for this set, that's also even. And these would probably be eight and six, and we'd have a real start. Well, in fact, this is eight or six already, because, the, oh no, that would apply if those were even. We don't know that. These could be odd, these could be one and three. Okay, that's four, six, or eight. That is not as thrilling a pencil mark. Somehow I was looking at these and thinking they're even, but I don't know. Uh, there's really no way to tell yet. Um, right. I don't know how to extend these across. Now, we have also got this zipper, where a green is adding to something to make a grey. But I don't think that tells us what this is. If, if grey is odd, that's grey. But if grey is even, that's green. So... So, oh, so, no, I can, I can colour this cell, because those two are two greens that add together to make even. These two must be the same parity, again, to add together to make even. The absolute function that I'm going to be relying on is that even and odd makes odd, and two of the same parity always make even, and you can test that out for yourself, it's definitely true. Now, in this box, we've got four greys. If they're evens, both of these are odd. And then that tells us about... Yeah, that's exact... That would make this even. That, that would figure. If they're odd, though, then one, we've got one of each going on here. So if grey is odd... Um, OK, I think I do learn something about one of them. What is it, though? Let me just figure this out again. If grey is even, these two are both odd, 
and they're both green. Both odd, both green. If grey is odd, then there's one of each here. And that's odd, and this would have to be odd. So this would be grey, but again, this would be green. So this is always green. And now we've got four of each. And that tells me, is that right? I need to check that logic again, because I think I've just uncovered the whole um, parity of these cells, if that's right. So I'm going to do that again. If grey is even, we've got all four evens in box six. There are only four, obviously, two, four, six, eight in each box. Then both of these would be green in that circumstance. However, the other circumstance involves grey being odd. And in that case, there's going to be one each of green and grey here. But that is now odd and that even, and that is required to be odd. And in that circumstance, this is green again. So this is always green. Now, if we look at box six, we've got four greens <clears throat> and four greys. Now I'm going to change tack. I think that honestly is smoke particles getting into my throat, which is terrifying in a way. Anyway, sorry, I'm changing tack and thinking that we've got four greys and four greens in this box. The ninth cell must be odd, because it's the fifth one of its colour, whichever colour it is. And now, that is odd. Does that... Oh, I thought that was going to tell us the parity here. It doesn't. Oh, I could have worked out that was odd from these being different, could I? If that was odd and that was even, that has to be odd. If that's even and that's odd, that has to be odd. Oh, bother. Oh, I thought we'd crack the whole parity thing and I absolutely haven't. I still don't know whether grey or green is odd. How odd of God to do that to me. Um... Okay, I'm going to have to go somewhere else. Right, I'm going to have to go to these two, which overlap. I'm going to have to use different colours now. So I'm coming down to yellow and red. And I'm now getting a bit scared that at some point I'm going to have to try a seventh and eighth colour. Okay, I, I'm hoping to join yellow and red at least up to green and grey, if not up to blue and orange at some point. Anyway, the, these patterns are militated by these given Battenbergs. Ah, and there is no given Battenberg here, so that can't be yellow. And there is no given Battenberg here, so that can't be yellow. So now we've got a three by three square of beautiful colour. Now, can I do this same trick? If they're different, just like those two, that makes this odd. I think that's what I should have been able to work out down here. And... I'm nothing if not a slow learner, so let's see if I did learn that. If that's even and that's odd, this has to be odd. If that's odd and that's even, this has to be odd. Yes, so that's odd. And now we can Battenberg this top cell. Oh, I was sorry, I was told people didn't like the light blue because some colorblind people can't see it at all which is a shame, so we'll go dark blue. I can afford to do that. If I do need a seventh and eighth color, I'm going dark green and light blue, but let's hope I don't. I haven't used purple. Oh yeah, that's because of the lavender. Okay, anyway, we've got something going in the corner now. Now, let's look at the zippers. Right. Here we have two reds on the same arm of the tuning fork. Now that means these two cells must be the same colour, red or yellow. Um, because this is either odd, in which case these are different each time, or this is even, in which case these are the same. Now, if that was even, these would all be red, and we'd have all five reds done here, and everything else in the box would be yellow and even. If that's odd, these are yellow, but then I don't know what parity yellow and red are. Well, I mean, oh, that's going to carry on here, isn't it? 
Ah, okay, so if they're yellow, that's red. This one is red on the Battenberg. So, if these are, if that's odd, these are yellow, that's red, and then we've got to complete the same that we've got to complete the box with four red and four yellow to go with that odd in that circumstance. Oh, I don't know, I'm getting confused now. We haven't matched any twos on this tuning fork. We have done it on this one. Can we use these two being the same? I don't think so. Okay, what I need to find is some Battenberg thing a negative constraint. So, so if orange is red, then we've got a Battenberg beginning to form here. And that will have to be yellow or blue or even to avoid it. Now oh, that's interesting. So if orange is red, sorry, if, if red is odd, that's how I should put this. If red is odd, that is going to have to be even to avoid the Battenberg. They're the four evens, and these are all odd then. That looks like it works. Okay, so that's one possible arrangement. The other is that yellow is odd, in which case this is a domino of red and yellow, because that's odd. And this must be odd in that case. So it's always the same as yellow. If yellow's even, that's even. If yellow's odd, that's odd. So that cell is yellow. I mean, that's, that's not a blinding finding, is it? Um, well, I don't know. Or is it? We've got th two yellow and two red there, a green and a grey there. That's three of each, odd and even. So these remaining three are two odds and an even. I mean, it's interesting here as well. If red was the same as green, I was going to say that's all four evens, but I don't know that they're even. They could be odd. Yeah, okay. We just need to extend this a bit more somehow. And it, it seems to be having to be done using this anti-Battenberg logic. Oh, look, I can fill in this cell because of this pattern not having a, a Battenberg symbol. So that's green. Ah! No, I, I don't know what. Oh yes, I can fill in this one because of this tuning fork, which has an even token. So that's green. Now it gets interesting. Right, now if red is green, they're both odd because that's five of them. Okay, so let's postulate that red is green. And red and green are both orange. They're all odd. And that becomes even. And this plus pattern is all, all odd. Oh, and that's, I don't know, that's even. this? These two are the same because they're opposite greens on the tuning fork. They're either both grey or both green. I don't know. I mean, it's possible that red is the same as green, but it's, it's a little unlikely at the moment. I don't see what the problem with having a plus of odd there was. It's interesting, you'd know something about the numbers if that was a plus of red. You'd know that this would be a 1-7 pair and a 3-5 pair and you could put 8 there. That's quite interesting, it's quite powerful. It would be quite good if that was even. But I haven't proved it and I don't know.
Well, okay, let's say green was not red, but was yellow. Uh, yeah, then I just don't even know whether it's even or odd. That's, that's less interesting. So up here, I've got two odd and two even. We know about that. Then those are both yellow. Could these be both red? Yes. In fact, if yellow is blue, they are both red. If yellow is orange, this is a domino. And that could go either way around. Um, except it can't go either way around because there's no Blattenberg symbol here. So if this is a domino, that's blue and that's orange. And if it's a pair of the same, they're both orange. Is that right? Have I exhausted all the possibilities here? I think I have. So let me just figure that one out again. If yellow is even, these are all odd. If yellow is odd, then because that's odd, this is a domino and we would know from the Battenberg that it's blue on top of orange. So this is always orange. Wow, I mean, that took me ages. Um, and it doesn't tell me what this colour is at all, out of either red, yellow or blue, orange. Unless it does in some way that I can't see. I don't think it does. I don't think there's a threat of a Battenberg pattern left up here anymore that's not marked. If they were both orange, that would be orange as well. They were both blue. That, oh no, that wouldn't have to be blue. We wouldn't have the Battenberg threat. Oh my goodness, okay. Let's, let's just take things handy. Let's go back somewhere where we can find something out that'll be useful. So this is a pair. Ah, oh, and this is a pair. These are the same as each other and the same as that. Do I, do I really need to go into a seventh and eighth color here? I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. Sorry for the color blind, but I need to try and understand this puzzle. These must be the same color. Those two are the same because they match off against reds on a tuning fork. Those two are the same because of the Battenberg and that's the opposite on the Battenberg there. Now, Where's that going to reach and tell me anything? If red is this bright blue, then they're both yellow and even. If bright blue, that's if red is bright blue. If red is dark green, we've got four reds there. And then this is odd, and is the fifth red. This can't... Ah, oh, that feels interesting. Hang on. Yeah, if... If dark green is red, those four are all red. But these are different, so you're adding different parities to get odd. So that's the fifth red. So this is always even. And this is even if these are red, because all the reds are odd, and that's even. So that cell is dark blue, actually even. Ah, and then in this row, we've got an even odd pair there, an even odd pair there, an even odd pair there. That's using up all four evens together with that one we found. So this is orange and odd. And is that going to help at all? No. Uh, well, not necessarily no. There's no... This is very confusing now. There's no Battenberg symbol here. So if orange was the same as red, 
then it would have to be the same as dark green to avoid that being a double yellow Battenberg. And if orange is the same as red, we know that that is odd as well. Yes, that all works. If orange is the same as green, then we don't have a Battenberg threat. Can these still be odd, these bright blue? I don't know, for some reason my brain keeps thinking of bright blue as even, and, and it's not, it's unknown. I suppose that's because of its blueness. And I did make it bright blue up there at one point. But this could be odd. Let's think about that. If these are odd, it doesn't even tell us what red is. Oh, oh, yes, it does, because of the Battenberg threat here. Right. If bright blue are odd, red is odd. And if green is odd... Didn't I work out that red was odd then as well? No, I didn't necessarily. Can red be even? That would be all the evens then. No, that's impossible. Red can't be even because this would be a Battenberg. There we go. Okay, we've got one of the pairs of colours disambiguated. Red is odd. Yellow is even. Now, I can finish off this because we've got four evens done in the box. That's odd. Now, coming down this column, I've got four odds and a pair in this other colour of green and dark blue. OK, let me, let me change light blue to yellow and green to red because the colours are just frankly easier for me to work with. Anyway, down this column, we've got four odds, and one of those must be odd. So these are both even. We've nearly got two on this tuning fork opposite each other now, but unfortunately I don't know what red is. Do I? Do I, do I? These yellows could still be even, and that's odd, or they could be odd, and that's even. I think this one is always red. If yellow is odd, that's red because all five odds are gone. If yellow is even, all four evens are gone in the box and that's different. So that's red now. So, I don't know that the, these reds and yellows are just mixing in with the oranges and blues without quite telling me what they're doing. So this is a domino in this column because we've got three oranges and two blues and that must be one of each. So this is one of each. Oh, down here we've got red plus blue equals whatever this is. So here red plus blue must equal it as well. I, unfortunately, I don't know whether red is the same as blue, but I do know that that's blue. Similarly, if that's blue, that's red. This is weird. Then I can color this Battenberg in red and yellow. This is very strange. I hope you're following what I'm doing. And if you're not, I'm very sorry. Um, now, what has that taught us about this? Probably nothing. We've got two yellows and two reds, one green and gray. That's fine. That adds up with two odds and one even. In this row, we've got yellow, red, yellow, red, that's two pairs of odd even. There's another pair of odd even, and there's a fourth even. So these two cells are odd. <sighs> I'm really confusing myself. I honestly think this puzzle probably has to be solved this way, though. Or may, I mean, there may be some brilliant spot that I should be able to do right at the moment. Yes, here it is, here it is, here it is, got it. Okay, I'm going to link orange, blue, and red, yellow now with this 2x2 two two area. See what you used to think I'm talking about first before I do it. Okay, if red was blue and yellow was therefore orange, we would have a Battenberg here, so it's not. Red is orange, 
yellow is blue. So now I've got lots of orange and blue literally connected up. And now I know that this is orange and blue on this tuning fork and that top could still be my nine. It's definitely orange. And everywhere up it, we need different colors. So I can extend my green and gray a bit to those two cells because they're going with these two. Now I must avoid a Battenberg in this area. So that's gray. This puzzle's getting, ah, look, in this row, orange can't be green because that would be six of them. And that's too many for any color. So green has become even, gray has become odd, and I'm down to two colors for the whole grid. And now I can probably finish coloring the whole grid. I must be able to count this row. That's orange. Uh, I could have done that by looking at the tuning fork. Now I've got four orange on the tuning fork. In, sorry, four orange in the box. Those two have to be the same, so they're even. Um, any Battenbergs to avoid anywhere? Not obviously. That's one of each by count, so that's one of each. Oh, and there's, um, there must be something very obvious. Oh, this tuning fork takes one of each on each pair, so that's orange. Now in this column, I can count for blues, so that's orange. Any other sets of four blue? I see four blue in row four, so that's orange. On the tuning fork, that's blue. In the box, that's orange. These are different from each other. I'm looking for four blues again, or five oranges anywhere. I will take either four blues in column one. So those two are orange. On the tuning fork, this has to be blue. And this, to count the box, has to be orange. I've got a P pentomino of orange. Oh, and a W there. And a, S, a U there. Nobody cares about the pentominoes at the moment. Um, right. This is going well. I haven't had to use the negative constraint for a little while. I mean, it's incredible when it comes into play what it can do for us. Um, right, this, this cell on the zipper is even adding to something to give odd and the thing it adds to is odd. These two are the same, no, they're different colors on the zipper. And they're gonna be the last of their type in column nine. Uh, this is annoying. These two are gonna be different from each other. Again, they're adding to an order total. Yeah, that's not really what I want to use the negative constraint. Um, ah, negative constraint here. There we go. That's orange. And that's a fourth orange in the box now. And a fifth one in the row. These are all even. Right. On the tuning fork, that is odd. In the box, this is odd. Um, in the column, this is odd. In this column, this is even. In that's a pair, one, one of each. That's one of each. That's one of each. So this must be one of each. Oh, that's one of each. Now, there's no Battenberg here. So blue must be on top of blue, orange on top of orange. We can make this blue on the tuning fork. This is orange in the box. Now we can finish off the coloring with blue, orange, blue. And there we go. That, <laughs> I feel like that's a victory. All I've done is colored the grid. I haven't got a number into this puzzle after half an hour. Now, these are even and that's even. So that is now eight or six and there's a two on this pair. It's either two, four adds up to six or two, six adds up to eight. The s Ooh, I wanted to say the same's true here, but that could be a pair of fours. So I'm not risking that. I mean, we are selecting from two, four, or six. And here, there must be a two in that group. Again, like here. 
well, that hasn't really got a lot done. These odd ones are much harder to figure things out. That is either a 1-7 or a 3-5 pair. Hmm. Okay, I didn't think putting in the numbers was going to be necessarily the hard bit. Maybe I need to think about where nines can be, because... Okay, let's start with that. Nines can never be on zipper lines, because they've got to add with something else. Ah, but they can be on circles, on, on the dots of zipper lines. So nine in this box is going to be in one of those two cells. Nine in this column is going to be in one of those two cells. Nine in this box is in one of those two. Ah, but nine in this box is in one of those three. So nine in this row has to be here. Okay, we found something. I've got a digit in after 31 minutes. Come on. Now, nine in this box is in one of those two. Nine in this box is in one of these four. Nine in this box is in one of those three. Nine in box five is in one of those two. Now that is an X-wing with those two. That uses up the two nines in rows four or five, so that's not a nine. And this is, and that is good, because that is going to tell me where the nine is in box three. Also, that this corner is not a nine, rather to my surprise and chagrin. That's not a nine either. That is a nine. Now we're going to get all the nines in the puzzle, I reckon. We've got to put one in there. We've got one in one of those, but the... Oh, okay, we don't quite get all the nines. We've got a little X-wing of them. Okay, but this is now not nine. It's five or seven. It's always adding two pairs. Well, it's adding them in, in three different boxes, basically. It could be five. I mean, I said that early on. It's still true and irritating. Um, do I think about eights? I don't know, because eights, well, that can't be eight. One of these two is eight. Ah, oh, this can't be eight because it's on a five or seven zipper. So that is eight in box six. Now eight's in one of those two cells. If either of those are eight, then they're opposite a one. This can't be eight on this zipper again. Nor can this. Are they on? Yeah, they're on the same zipper. So that's eight. Aha! That make, puts nine on its dot and a one on the other end. So that eight and one adds up to nine. That's going to get rid of these nine potentials, and we have finished nines now. And we've got a one in the grid, and that puts a one here by odd even Sudoku. That is going to make this four or six by zipper technology. This can't be eight on the zipper. That is... That's not eight. That is. This is a two-six pair adding up to eight. That's a four. This is a two-six pair. This one, let's be careful, because that could still be a four-four pair. In fact, this has become a four, so now it's not a four-four pair. It's a two-six pair, but we don't know the order. Four is in one of these cells. In fact, that is two, four, or six. That doesn't help. Four's in one of those cells. I'm going to mark that finally, and one of those two. Now, these could... No, that can't be eight because of the zipper it's on. So there's an eight in one of those two cells. Um, this can't be eight, and that can't be eight because of the zipper they're on again. So there's an eight in one of those two. This is two or six in its row. This is not one. So this is at least five, because that must be at least three. In fact, since that's at least three, this can't be six anymore. That one's been very useful there. So this is a two. 
and that's a 6, and this is a 2-4 pair. Hang on, I can use the 6 on its zipper line, that's a 2. This is in a 4-6 pair, that's now a 2 in the column, that's a 6. This is a 2-4 pair, I was going to mark them a while ago, can do it now. That's now an 8, that goes with a 1. This is a 4-6 pair. That is where 2 goes in box 7. These are all from 4, 6, 8. We can't have 8 on the long zipper. Now, I'm going to start marking up candidates soon, but let's see if I can keep doing even Sudoku first. That's an 8. That's not... Oh, that has to be 2 because of these two 2s. Right. That might enable me to finish off all of my evens. Or it might not. That's a 6-8 pair now. That's a 2-4 pair. Are these not resolved somehow? That's a 2-4 pair. So now I've got a 2-4 pair in the row and that's not 4. That's not 2 because I've got a 2 in this row. 2 there, 4 there, 2 there. That's not 4 either. 4 is there. That is, this is a 6-8 pair. Okay, I haven't got those six eights. I've got these two sorted out. Okay, that's as much as I can do for the moment on even. But this can't be a six, because that would have to be a seven, and this would be a one. So that's a four. That's going to sort out six more of my evens. Six there, four and six. This now can't be a 5, because again, that would be a 1. So that's 7, 3 on the zipper, 5 there. And we're going to be able to finish quite handily now. In fact, let's do the zippers, which I've been leaving for a while. 5 there, that's a 7 to make the 9 total. This one, the opposites always add up to 7. So 5, 3, 3, 3 again, 3 again. <laughs> Loads of fours on the tuning fork there, loads of threes on the other side. That's a seven to finish the box. That's a five to finish the column. That's a seven to add up the zipper. That's a one and a three by Sudoku. Then we've got five, seven, one. That's a five. That makes the total right. We've got seven, one, seven. The zipper works there. That's good to see. Three, one, five. Seven and three. 3, that's a 5, that's a 1, 3 and 5 down here, they must go in. Then we get a 1 and a 7. I haven't had that interruption that I was expecting yet. Now on the zipper here, 3 plus 6 equals 9. That's an 8, that works with the 1. Excellent. And there we go. What a magnificent tuning fork puzzle. I liked that. And... Uh, Excellent work from Glum Hippo, as usual. And as I say, that will help you, maybe. Um, so it took me 30 minutes to get a digit, and then we're finished in 38. That's good. I mean, I like that sort of puzzle that unfolds once you finally crack it. But it, it took a lot of matching up opposites and using the negative constraint. Beautiful example of the genre. Uh, check out our Patreon pack. It's great fun, and I hope to see you again for more Sudoku tomorrow. Um, if you can spare the time, thank you for watching, and bye for now.